All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Sinclair, and I'm the Global Solution Specialist here at SDS2. Today, I'm going to go over some of the topics on the new enhancements and features inside of SDS2 2020 and the benefits of upgrading. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to type them in on the side where the chat is for the webinar, and I'll be answering them at the end. Make sure to stay tuned for next month. We will be going a further deep dive into these topics with our technical webinars with Ryan Vanek over the 2020 topics. I'm just going to briefly touch on some of the stuff that I'm going to be covering today, and then we are going to go deeper into it during the demo. The first is we have some new features with the Extend Member End tools. So when you import in an IFC, for example, sometimes those member runs don't match up. So instead of having to remodel it in, we came up with new tools on how to extend that to get the correct accuracy without having to remodel, which is going to save a lot of time. We have the new look and feel of our ABM. So it's going to help a lot with the trackability of the material throughout the entire project. We have PDF interoperability, so you can import in a PDF along with a DXF and DWG file. We can scale those up with some new tools that we have put in here for our reference drawing tools, or you can even link those, which I'll cover it a little bit later. These are just a few of the connections that we've added. We have welded welded clip angles through gusset plates. And then we also have bracing to bracing connections are now supported with design calculations. Enhanced member types. Just for this example, we have added some new functionality to the miscellaneous members. So now it can track the ABM information in there along with some more intelligence. We have added in secondary girts, which are basically vertical girts. And you can either frame them to the floor or out in space, or you can also frame them in between two girds. We do have a new Strumis export, which I'll be covering, and we also have a Strumis webinar that will be going on next month as well. And then I have detailed connection views. So I can blow up a piece of that connection without having to actually affect the other drawing. This can happen on erection views, submaterial, or even member details. All right, let me go ahead and jump into our demo now. We know that interoperability is very important to our customers, so SDS2 can import several different file types to ensure that you can deliver for any BIM project. And sometimes 3D modeling requires looking at the problem from more than one angle. So now you can split windows in SCS2 for more flexibility with working in the 3D model. While importing in models can be extremely time saving, oftentimes detailers are met with accuracy issues with like member ends not extending. We've now created some new member end tools to extend to. So that one I just extended all of my member ends within a foot from that column. So I didn't have to re-enter in any of the steel. The ABM has now got a complete rework. So it has an improved look and feel to help with the material trackability throughout the project. Now there are material qualifiers. So you can say what type of member or material you want to actually qualify to be in that report. And then I have different sorting options that I can see and see if I want to actually include that into my report. I can quickly review the ABM report. You can also edit that report if I wanted to type in maybe one foot three instead of one foot one. I can also review this inside Microsoft Excel or I can send this out to somebody in Excel format. Custom filters make it really easy to be able to find certain properties inside of your model or your drawing editor. 
So maybe I always want my beams, columns, and bracing to always be included in my S modeling workflow. I can save this off and always use it to make sure I have the most accurate bids that are going out. We created a cost estimating tool that's not going to replace your MRP or MIS tools. It just allows you to quickly compare maybe the cost of design changes if you want shear taps versus clip angles, or even help propose new opportunities to save costs on a project. Now we do have new PDF interoperability, so it's going to help me jumpstart my model from reading from 2D documents that you most commonly receive. I can either import this in as a reference drawing or I can just simply link it to that file which I'll do a little bit later on so it's not actually stored inside of my job and so it's going to constantly read from that file location. When importing in the PDF it might not be to scale so we do have new scaling features or tools and you can also set your reference point. So maybe I take a dimension off of that drawing and then I can easily scale that up in my X, Y, or both directions. Reading off of this 2D PDF, I can now see that I have to add in a new bay but I do already see the section sizes and I could easily snap to those locations to put that in without adding in construction lines or points of reference. Adding in these members is really simple. I can quickly add in the section sizes up on top with the member add options bar and quickly snap in those points. I mentioned earlier that we can do bracing to bracing connections now. So this is two and three point gusset connections. And then this is also going to be provided with the design calculations. I can do these for vertical bracing and horizontal bracing. Also going along the bracing, we can now do through gusset. So maybe I'll just turn this to an HSS really quick. And we do have a new option inside of the vertical brace to do a through gusset for the HSS column. We do have new clip angle configurations. We now support welded to welded. SDS2 allows for a lot of different configurations for the entire job, or I can also change this on a per member basis and just override the setup. And maybe I want this specific one to be a welded welded connection. We now support a tying load that's a new check that was added for the ASC and LRFD connection design. This can add, be added for the entire job, or you can also add it for a per member basis. And if I wanted that to auto calculate, or I can override that. In my design calculations, it will also show for all of the structural integrity checks and for the tying resistance. Another example of fabrication optimization that we can continue to add to SDS2 is the ability to combine plate washers. I can now add these into strips or plates and I can also ship them loose or with the member as well. With SDS2 consistently adding in new member types, we have now come up with a new way to keep it organized when adding in a new member. We have now have it broken down into new categories, but a customer can always create their own categories. We have now added in a preview while adding in miscellaneous members so that the user can see what they're adding before it's placed. Miscellaneous members are now more intelligent, meaning that you have the ability to control more information and components can now be added to miscellaneous members. 
The surface connection is newer, but it's going to be very powerful for our users when the geometry may not be able to create a system connection for them, but they still need to model it in the building. We have also organized our erection views. So now I can have views that are for detailing or maybe ones that I don't want to go through detailing. So I have a girt line here and I mentioned before about linking a PDF. To be mindful of the project size, instead of importing in the file and hosting it in the project, you can just link it from that location. You can't edit this in Drawing Editor since it's just a link. And they're currently working on refreshing it in the future, but currently it's just a stagnant link. The PDF is going to allow me to quickly add in all of these girts without having to lay out tons of construction lines. You can see how fast it is to model in the secondary seal inside of SDS2. And then when I add it on top of linking in the PDF, it cuts down time even more. We're constantly adding in new member types inside of SDS2, and the new one that we have just added is a secondary girt. So this is going to allow you to frame in between two girts, or you can also frame out in space with the connection material provided. Using my PDF, it's going to make it very easy for me to add it, these in. I see with my secondary girts, it's going to make it very easy for me to add in the doorway and the two different windows as well. Once you have that in there, then I can just quickly copy that up and it's going to retain all that information and quickly connect into the other girts. Once you're done adding in all of the secondary steel and making modifications to the model, then you can go ahead and start to update your ABM. With the ABM, it's going to show the material all the way through the entire project. So not only is the update ABM going to show all of the information that has been changed since the previous ABM, it's going to also show me all of the material that's been added since. When I go to review my new ABM, it's going to show me anything that's been modified since the previous ABM. I can get an even more detailed report if I want to say I want to see something from the original ABM to this ABM. And then it's going to print out a report for every single thing that's changed since the first ABM and this present one. I spoke earlier about keeping organized for the erection views. This goes the same thing with detailing the erection views. It's just going to be a better visualization for what needs to be detailed or how they are detailed. We've added in detail views. Detail views are going to be very helpful for trying to blow up a specific part of a connection without having to modify or affect the original drawing. So when you do a detail view, it's just going to affect what's inside of a box. Then I can go ahead and change what's inside of that box without having to modify or affect that original drawing. You can now update a member style on the fly. So this will make it so you don't have to re-detail a drawing. So if I want to just update maybe my column and my beam to update as wire, I don't have to re-detail the entire drawing for that. Now for this example, it's just going to be for my detail view. And I can even place that detail view on a sheet by itself as well. Now that I'm finished, I can go ahead and export all of this out to Strumis. We have a new Strumis export. It's going to include a BSWX file along with any of the other file types that you'd like to export, just like any of the other MIS or MRP software. I can then view that BSWX file inside of BIM review to see what actually got exported out of SDS2.
That concludes today's webinar on the new 2020 enhancements. Today I've covered the Extend Member Ends, ABM Interface, Cost Estimating Tool, the PDF Interoperability, New Connections for 2020, Secondary GERTs, the Strubus Export, and Detail Views. I'll now give you a few more minutes to type in your questions. If your questions don't get answered today, make sure to please contact our support reps. And if you're looking to schedule a demo, please contact the sales team. Keep an eye out next month for our technical webinars. I'll also be doing a webinar with Strumis on the new Strumis export.